Where's Charlie? Well, the top vote getter in the last three council elections, Charlie Lucan, is in Congress now, so the race for mayor has become a real horse race. Any booth at all the same? Mayor David Mann voting this morning. Mann became mayor after Lucan went to Congress. Mann's top rival is council's senior member, Guy Guckenberger, who actually beat Mann two years ago. Guckenberger came in second, Mann third. So cold. I don't think I'm <laughs> Man's support is in the traditional Democratic areas, such as black neighborhoods. Guckenberger does best on the far west and far east sides, Republican strongholds. The battle is in mixed areas like Carthage, Oakley, and East Walnut Hills. Whomever his top vote getter becomes mayor, we won't know till midnight. This is the longest day of one's life. I'd love to be mayor if that's uh, in the card, so to speak. But whether it's Mann or Guckenberger on top this time, for both of them, it could be the last time. There you go. Thank you. That's because voters are deciding whether to limit council members to four consecutive terms, eight years total, and it would be retroactive. If that passes, Mann, Guckenberger, Merlesina, and Strauss would all be forced out in 1993. Some voters think term limitation would rob council of needed experience and should be defeated. I vote no, because if you do have someone that is good in their and their term is limited, then they're out. But other voters say term limitation would bring fresh blood to City Hall. I think it's a good idea. I think we have a lot of incumbents who uh, kind of get uh, set in their ways. I think uh, after a period of time, everybody deserves a change. Look at some new faces, some fresh ideas. Term limitation is not the only potential change. A return to proportional representation is also on the ballot. Supporters say PR, a system of weighted voting, would increase minority representation Presentation. Opponents say the system, which was voted out in 1957, is complicated and confusing. Uh, I'm against it 100 <laughs> percent. Why? I, uh, I, I thought it was a bad plan years ago, and I still think it is. But don't count PR out automatically. Three years ago, it came pretty close on a shoestring campaign, and this year the campaign is better organized. But this year, the race for the top nine is taking on a new emphasis on race itself. News Channel 5's Jeff Hirsch reports. There's a chance a city which is 38% black could end up with an all-white council. Precinct 17D and over the Rhine. If you're looking for reasons why African-American candidates find it so hard to win in Cincinnati, you need look no further than here. You see, black voters register in the same proportions as whites, but they vote a lot less, especially in poor areas. Two years ago, 595 voters registered in this precinct, but only 89 showed up. That's 50. Percent. The hope is for more this year, but there's no guarantee. We used to be up past 100, past 100, but it's not what it should be for this place. We should have, we should always have over 200, but we don't. Why not? I don't know. I don't know. That's bad news for council's incumbent black council members Dwight Tillery and Tyrone Yates, and for non-incumbent black candidates too. But even if black turnout was better, white votes are still needed for African-American candidates to win. And historically, votes like that have been hard to come by. Please consider Councilman Yates, ladies. White voters, particularly in the conservative west side, rarely support blacks. There are exceptions like Ken Blackwell, but it's unusual. And the combination of historic voting patterns plus African-American council members who are considered vulnerable could lead to an all-white council. That has many voters worried. Well, it would be a terrible signal to me if that happened. It would say that uh, Cincinnati he is, uh, like uh, Natchez, Mississippi, the most racist, racist, prejudiced place in southern Ohio. And it would say that we would have to move to the federal courts and get a uh, district uh, city council election. Good evening. Election Day 1991 looks like a good day for the Cincinnati public schools, despite dire predictions. The levy has won. Also in Cincinnati, some major surprises on city council. It looks like council will not consist of only white males. We have a new mayor, a black, Dwight Tillery, the first black mayor since Ken Blackwell. I had the uh, wonderful opportunity for 10 years to serve in city council. I've had another 10 years reporting in it. I got to tell you, Mr. Mayor, please get used to that. There is no surprise with e which equals this. You, uh, you know, this is not, this is true beating Dewey. <laughs> Did you ever think of this, Dwight? No, not at all. I'm, I'm quite uh, surprised, obviously very pleasantly surprised, sure. but nonetheless quite surprised. And I'm happy and I'm very grateful to all the people of the city of Cincinnati who came out and supported me. Obviously they have a lot of confidence. I think when we take a look at the votes, and this is, this is a guess, 
several things happened tonight, and the most significant was initially that the school levy passed overwhelmingly. You have a lot of support among people, apparently, that support that school levy. They came out, they voted for you, they voted for Roxanne Quails, they voted for uh, uh, Tyrone Yates. There is a solid city vote there, and, and you were a benefactor of that, and deservedly so. I, I, you're probably true. I've not had a chance to really look at yeah. all this. I've been sort of passed from one reporter to the other, and I haven't had a chance to really sort of collect my thoughts. But yeah. nonetheless, uh, I, perhaps uh, you're, you're correct. But nonetheless, I'm, I'm very happy about it, very grateful to be the beneficiary of, of those, uh, those forces out there. Give us something from your heart for a moment, okay? Um, you're, you have a chance now to speak to a city that for years has had a very conservative reputation. For years, to be blunt, has not had the best reputation necessarily in terms of race relations. The people of this community stood up today and said something very strong. They said, more than anybody else running, we want Dwight Tillery to be our leader. What does that say? What do you want to say to the people out there? Well, I'm deeply touched uh, to, to have that kind of response. Jerry, I went to all parts of the city. I left no stone unturned. I went to Sailor Park. I went to Price Hill and East End and the West End and Bond Hill. And I tried to carry a message that people wanted to hear. And so so what I tried to do is to be bring those uh, forces together and, and support my candidacy. We got a lot of good responses from people throughout the city. Congratulations. We're all looking to you for great leadership. Well, you know? thank you. You know, thank you're, you. You're a good man. Good for you. Well, we're going to work very hard at it. Lead us well, Dwight. Thank you. I'll do the very best that I can, Jim. I know you will, Dwight. Uh, Norma, <laughs> sorry. Well, we've been here a lot of election years, and it seems every election year as we sit here at the end of an election night we're surprised by something just about yes, every year and and this was the greatest surprise of all i think when we take a look finally uh, at the results what we're going to find is that what the driving force in all of this was the school levy and it started with the binger commission report when the binger commission said there are reforms that had to be made when the school board followed and endorsed those supports when you had michael uh, brandt uh, as the superintendent taking the lead and said we're going to have discipline in our schools and we're going to reform the system people bought into it and we had a successful school levy well over you know over 50 percent of cincinnati public schools are the inner city uh, minority black um, those people came out and voted in huge numbers i think we will find and the support for the school levy brought out voters that would support dwight tillery that would support liberals that would support people who are willing to spend money on the inner city and i think what happened is that force behind the school levy drove Dwight Diller Tillery to be the number one vote getter, brought a city council of three women, two blacks, the most liberal we've had in easily in a generation, perhaps forever. And uh, I think that's what we're going to see with the final results. Cincinnati stood up and said, we want our schools and we want a liberal city council. And tomorrow we will continue to analyze exactly what happened all day today, but that's our time for now. Good evening, and for Dwight Tillery, this truly is a very good evening. Tillery is getting ready to become Cincinnati's mayor in less than a month. That's what the city's voters have decided. We spent most of the day with mayor-elect. News Channel 5's Steve Forrest reports Tillery's triumph is due to more than a year of very hard work. When they Dwight Tillery the talking the about his secret to winning. There's the West End dance they have every November. They had 2,000 people come in. and. Probably most of those people didn't even know who I was. But I was standing there saying, you know, I'm council member designee Dwight Tillery. And I shook about most of those folks' hands. This was in November of 1990. And we continued. Today was a payoff for all that work. Hello? Yes. Well, thank you. It has been an almost non-stop 24 hours of congratulations for Cincinnati's next mayor. It started last night at the Board of Elections when the votes were counted and Tillery ended up at the top of the pile. It continued this morning, even as he left his modest Bond Hill house. Tillery was immediately met by a neighbor with good wishes. Good to see you this morning. Good to see you. Very good. Thank you. Thanks so much. Very proud of you. Very kind. Thank you. Appreciate the support. More than anything.
That may have been Tillery's message this day after the election. He took it to Findlay Market. All right, all right, man. I appreciate your help. Thank you, thank you. How you doing? I knew you was going to Thank you. I knew you was going to All right, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Dwight Tillery. And you was on TV? Yes, ma'am. I'm glad I'm you won, I'm baby. your new mayor. Thank, Thank you. These are the people Thank who made you. Tillery the city's first elected Thank black mayor. So they have brought him more attention in one day than he got in months as a councilman. A reporter from a Cleveland newspaper interviewed him today. Outgoing Mayor David Mann came to Tillery's office and embraced him. And when he made his way into council chambers for today's regular meeting, the people inside broke into applause. Council members congratulated Tillery on a good campaign and more. Your service on council has uh, been very admirable. You've been very good at uh, carrying uh, uh, the water on significant issues in a ways that obviously appeal to the public. In return, Tillery said he was humbled. And certainly I would do my very best uh, as the next mayor of the city of Cincinnati to serve all the people of this great city. Well, there's a lot of surprise at City Hall tonight, and quite possibly nobody more surprised than Tillery himself. He told me today after we left Finley Market, he said, Steve, it's finally starting to sink in. Normally he'll have two years to get used to it. Kind of feels like he hit the lottery, huh? Yeah, in a matter he did. I mean, nobody thought he would finish anywhere above the, the middle of the pack at best, uh, but he did it with, well, he did it with a lot of hard work. He now says he's going to need a vacation. Because he hasn't had one in more than a year. <laughs> he might need it after all this. Thanks a lot, Now, they got budget coming up. Oh, that's true. <laughs>